Hello, second graders. We are on the First Communion Catechism. We're going to do lesson five today. Before that, we're going to begin with prayer. We're going to be doing the morning offering, whatever time of the day is. But this is a prayer you can do right away in the morning. Very simple. Uh, you can use these words or other words. You know? So we'll do this prayer, and then I'll explain maybe other ways you can you can do it, even your own words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh my God, I offer you every thought and word and act of today. Please bless me, my God, and make me good today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So a morning offering. So, and you first get up right away, kind of uh, kind of praying and ask, offering God, I offer this day all my actions, all my thoughts, my words, I want to grow in love. That's really what you're saying. Lord, I want to serve you. I want to grow in love and, and ask you for God's help. All right. So this, you can use that in your own words. Lord, help me today. I offer, I give you all my works, prayers, joys, sorrows, sufferings. And I ask that you help me grow in love. So that's, I mean, you can use your own words. You can use, it's a very beautiful way to start your day. Account. I want to start my day right away with thinking about, this is a day to grow in holiness, all right, to grow grow in divine love. We're on chapter 5 today. Our own sins, actual sins. So the last time we spoke about original sin, this is actual sin. Is original sin the only kind of sin? No. There is another kind of sin called actual sin. Adam and Eve committed original sin. We did not commit it, but we are born with it. All right, so we, we were born with original sin, really the lack of, of divine life, the lack of sanctifying grace in our souls. The sin we commit is actual sin, all right, because actual, like act, our acts, we can make uh, freely uh, do things that are bad, that are sinful. What is actual sin? Actual sin is any sin which we ourselves commit. Actual sin is doing wrong. We were are born, not born with actual sin. We committed ourselves. I've got some pictures here of what actual, from actual sin. So there's one. Oh, she's ripping out pages in a book. You're not supposed to be doing that. So that's not. Uh, oh, he's throwing a ball like right out a window, breaking a window. All right. Well, it doesn't seem like that was an accident or or he was way too close to that window. Okay. So doing things wrong, uh, kind of on purpose or just being negligent, uh, being not thinking uh, properly. So if this boy with this ball, if he's He's been told, like, don't be near the window when you, when you play ball. And he's like, he ignores that and he breaks it. He's, he kind of, he's responsible for that. It wasn't, you cannot a mere accident. How, how many sins of actual, kinds of actual sin are there? Well, there are two kinds of actual sin. Mortal sin and venial sin. All right. What is mortal sin? Mortal sin is a deadly sin. Like mortal die, dead, mortal wound. So it has to do with like mortality. Uh, it kind of comes from a Latin word meaning death. So it's deadly sin. Uh, it is a big sin committed on purpose. The word deadly means that it kills our soul. It really kills our friendship or relationship with God. Children do not often commit mortal sin. God protects them in a special way. Uh, but big people sometimes commit mortal sins. Even big boys and girls do sometimes. We must hate original sin. Why should we hate it? Well, what does it do? What does mortal sin do to us? All right, because we're to hate something. We're supposed to hate things that are bad. All right, we're to love what are, things are good. Mortal sin makes us enemies of God and robs our souls of His grace. Essentially, when we someone commits a mortal sin, they're saying, "Nope, I want to break my friendship with you. I love this is way more important than you, God. This is above you." I want to do my will over yours in a big way. Anyone who commits mortal sin loves himself more than God. He offends God very much. One whose soul is dead in sin has no power to love God. All right, You can't love God uh, in, a div in a divine way, in a proper way. He cannot please God. All right, So grace is the life of Christ in us. Mortal sin kills this life. It crucifies Christ in us, all right? So it's the idea we share in this divine life. And if someone commits a moral sin, essentially they're like, Jesus, I want you to die. I, I'm okay. I want to, you know, in terms of kill the life of my relationship with you. 
this beautiful and we want to keep this life of god this friendship the grace in the soul christ lives in us what does that mean we, we live in friendship with god he's filling us with his divine life mortal sin breaks that uh, essentially uh, we destroys that life of grace in the soul. What happens to those who die in mortal sin? Those who die in mortal sin are punished forever in the fire of hell. Hell is a terrible place. Those who are there suffer great pain. They are slaves to, of the devil. They hate God and everyone else. They love only themselves. They can never be happy. And really, it's uh, God sends them to hell in part because uh, they would hate being with God. They've, they've turned their heart away from God and so they wouldn't like it in heaven, all right? So that's why we want to hate mortal sin, because it turns us away from God. Uh, and if we die in that state, then we're, we're eternally separated from God. We want to live for God, all right? So it's cultivating our relationship with God and protecting our heart, our soul. What is venial sin? Venial sin is a lesser sin. Venial sin is doing something big that God does. Mortal sin is doing something Something big that God does not like. Venial sin is doing something not so big, so smaller, that God does not like. Sometimes we commit venial sin on purpose. Sometimes we commit it without thinking or, you know, by not really thinking fully through. Uh, if we do it on purpose, it offends God. If we do it without thinking, it does not offend God. All right? Uh, in terms of, that's more of an accident, actually. I don't know if you want to call it a venial sin. Um, maybe there's... Uh, side commentary there, but we need to be sorry afterward and try to find why we committed the sin. So, I mean, if we do an accident, if something accident, but well, I wasn't really thinking like, because I was like the baseball picture here, like let's say he was told not to, and he didn't mean to break the window, but he was playing right next to the window with a baseball. Uh, he's partly responsible, right? He decided, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move away. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to decide to put myself in a, in a place where yeah, I could maybe break that window pretty easily. All right. Does venial sin make us enemies of God or rob our souls of his grace? No. Venial sin does not make us enemies of God or rob our souls of grace. Venial sin does not kill God's life in our soul, but it makes our soul sick. Our soul is more important than our body. It is worse to have a sick soul than a sick body. Our blessed Lord loves us. Venial sin makes him sad. If we do it on purpose or try or do not try to, to do better. All right. So venial sin uh, in the soul. It's Christ is sad in us. All right. So we want to make maybe a helpful, maybe you have a, a friend and let's say you really, let's say, so, uh, let's say some like your friend did something really mean to you, or you just think really bad to your friend, like really severed, broke the friendship really mad, like, you real, you said some stuff about them that weren't true and were spreading around. And you break that's like the like this. It breaks mortal sin. It breaks our friendship with God. Whereas maybe there's things like maybe you're uh, maybe you're annoying to a friend or teasing them in little ways, and it doesn't. You're still friends, but it's kind of it's not it's not help building up the relationship. That's what venial sins do. All right, they make uh, they don't build up our relationship with God, and they kind of put roadblocks. Uh, they kind of it's slowly making it harder uh, to have a, a rich friendship with God. So does venial sin displease God? Yes, it, venial sin displeases God. God loves you. Venial sin hurts your own soul. It displeases God to see you hurt yourself. And does your mother like to see you hurt yourself? Well, of course not. All right? Once you, my, your mother, parents want them, you to, to grow. And so it's important. So we want to... We want to stay away from committing sin uh, and commit good actions, good actions of love and virtue. All right, that is lesson five. Questions, a little question book you can pull out and, and do those now. God bless.